I do know that this is the most difficult area for us children of God when we get ourselves into situations like that we don't always know how to deal with those things and that is what we are going to talk about right now because the problems that you will be thinking where you are thinking that these problems will be coming from they will not be coming from those areas mm -hmm. so everyone has to be sensitive to that which we are going to talk about and I'm going to talk about the household wickedness amen I said household wickedness <laughs> you know it is very simple when we are hit by an external source we don't have any problem to deal with that but when it is internal <laughs> this is where the problem will be coming from children of God we don't know how to deal with our own siblings that are hurting us our own family members that are hurting us when it is external source we can easily send the Holy Ghost fire. But what about if it is your mother, your brother, your sister, your father? What do you do? Uh -huh. But according to the word of the Lord, this is the area that when a child of God is not sensitive, it will be the area of your downfall. It will be what? The area of your downfall. Very devastative. So many not knowing what to do in those type of situations. They have been fallen victims of life. Victims. Because the understanding is not there. This year 2018 that you have entered, if you are going to make it, and the Lord wants you to fulfill everything that he had written concerning your life for this year and the years to come. You have to be sensitive to these things. Then you shall be okay. In the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, and the verse is 34 to 36. Jesus Christ himself talking. And the Lord said, he said, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Think not that I am come to what? To send peace on earth. Seriously? Then what is it that you came for, Jesus? He said, I came not to send peace, but a sword. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Mm. He said, for I am come to set a man at, at variance against his father. I have come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. These are family issues. Then after the Lord have said this, he concluded by saying that a man's foe, a man's foes shall be they of his own household. A man for meaning enemies. A man's enemies shall be they of his own household. This is where the problem is. That is why I just want us to be sensitive. As much as we love our loved ones, our family members, 
our children, our parents. One has to be sensitive to the race of life. You are not going to stand in the day of judgment with your brother, with your mother. Not even with your own children. So when the arrow is shot from any one of them, a child of God must stand to save his own life. A mother must stand to save her life against a daughter. A son must stand and save his life against the father. Anyone that is not, these are very sensitive subjects because you are washing your dirty clothes in your own house. Most of the time, that is what we try to do. We try to cover the shame and the reproach of our own people. But in the midst of doing it, they themselves want to draw you deeper and deeper. And the next thing you know, you that want, you wanted to save, you end up being buried. In the name of my brother, my sister, my mother, my father, Jesus said, you have to be sensitive. He is not telling us to hate our people. But he said that the kingdom of God from the time of John the Baptist, it suffered violence. And the violent must take it by force. So only the violent are going to enter in. It's as simple as that. Including you putting aside your sentiment so that you shall be saved. It's very tough when the wickedness is coming from our own household. And it is not new in the surface of this earth. We're going to talk about Joseph. We know this. Why the example of Joseph? It is because it has been reminded us in the New Testament. We stand, we fight for our children. The Lord said we should train them the way they should go. So when they grow, they will not depart from it. But when, what about when you have trained these children and then they grow to depart from the training and now, now becoming a thorn in your flesh to the extent that you must sacrifice your life for your children. And let me tell you, in the in the physical realm, in human perspective, it sounds very good that you sacrifice your life for your child. In God's perspective, the Lord shall see what you have done and what were the decision of your children. Wisdom must be applied. Some of these things that we are talking about here, the Lord said that a daughter is going to be against the mother, the daughter-in-law going to be against the mother-in-law, and so on. Husband is going to be against a wife. Wife is going to be against the husband. We are saying this. Salvation is not corporate. Salvation is not what? Corporate. Salvation is individual. Individual. So, we are all going to stand one by one. Your wife that you love so much, if you get to heaven and you are not seeing her there, she did not make it. And she's not here on earth. She's in hell. You get there, you don't see your children. They did not make it. They are in hell. So, if... There is anything that we can do for them. We have to do these things in the wisdom of the living God so that we will help them to be saved and saving our lives also. It's amazing, right? One time, I was in the plane 
and I was like, we have our son and the air hostess. They came around and they started giving the instructions. And the lady said, in case of emergency, the mask will drop. And as soon as that mask drops, if you have a child, you parents start by putting the mask first. Then the child. I said, yeah, it's very good that you told me. Otherwise, I would have put this mask on my sons first. You know why they tell you to put it first? It is because if you are not saved, you cannot save that child. The same principle is applying to what we are talking about here. It's as simple as that. It's very difficult for one that is not saved to save anybody. It takes one that has strength to pull out the one that is drawing the water. The fall of a man shall be day of his household. Many have gone to the grave because they did not understand these principles. It's a reality of life. Love them, cherish them, but don't be foolish. Love them, cherish them, train them, but don't lose your salvation. It's amazing. You just take the same relationship between us and our God. As mighty as God is, and he has that power. The sun that we see in the morning rising, the sun cannot decide one morning and say that today I'm not going to rise. You know why? Because God did not give the sun something called free will. He said to do so, rise and shine. But you and I, God has given us something called free will. And the Lord will not overrule your will. He doesn't. So that is why I said, what you don't want, God will not do it for you. What your children do not want, the Lord will not force them. So as much as you are trying to infuse in them the ways of the Lord, unfortunately, if they reject Jesus and you do not have wisdom to save your life, you might be going down with them. That is the sad part of the whole situation. That's the wisdom that we have to apply. We are in a far country, all of us, because Jesus said we are in the world, but we are not from the world. We are to do what we have been called to do here and go home safe. Go home what? Safe. And I keep saying this, I said there is no child that is of the devil because God did not give Satan the ability to create human beings. So every child that is put in a woman's womb is of the Lord. And for the purpose of Almighty God to be accomplished in that child's life, our responsibility is to train them into life. But the decision of living life will come from them. And God is not forcing any one of us the clear proof of what I'm talking about is what is going on right now. You might be having a brother, a sister that is not willing to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Yet, look at you. Every Friday night, you are praying. You keep working, laboring at the vineyard of the living God. But yet, you are praying for a brother who had rejected Jesus. And as much as you keep talking, with the prayer, the decision is still the same. So how come 
Both of you are from the same training. Wisdom to live and be saved. It's unfortunate. The man Joseph had a dream. And Joseph had siblings. He was in a family. In Genesis 37, from verse 6 to 7, we are told that Joseph he had a dream and he told his, his dream to the brothers. Out of innocence, he did that. From genuine heart. You know what it means for you. What it means for you is that from your genuine heart, willing to raise the level of the family, you want to help. So you are doing everything to help. That is the innocence of your heart. Genuine heart. The seed of God in you. To see everyone in the family coming up. Because you are here in America. And now you can be a help unto many that lack. It sounds great. And that is what we have to do. And that is exactly what Joseph did. He told the dream to his brothers. But one thing that the brothers were so angry about Joseph's vision of life. He did not mean any bad thing against his siblings. Genuinely, this is what I saw. But they had understanding so, oh, so you are thinking to rule over us. Joseph said, no. I just want to tell you the dream that I had. Oh, so you are thinking to take our glory. He said, no. Because the family house is not containing all of us. So, I was just thinking that I can build this one for all of us. Oh, so now you are in America. You are what, now the one who is able to send money. So you are thinking that me being the firstborn, I am no more in possession to do these things. So you can speak American English to me. But genuinely from your heart, that is not what you are thinking. We are talking about serious issues. Because these things, if it was from somebody from outside, you would stand there and look at his face and say, what do you think? Now this one here, you are talking to your senior brother. You are talking to your senior sister. You are talking to your father. You are talking to your mother. And only God knows the tradition where we come from. The sensitivity is just very slight. Have to be very careful of what you say. From the genuine heart, it happened to me, and I have to take wisdom out of it and to continue my life. I saw the level of the family where I come from. By God's grace, my mom picked me up from Ghana at the age of 11. So I grew up in Paris. And I went to school. And the Lord helped me. So as I was making money from my job, I said, I am going to change the destiny of this family. I was seeing myself as God. As they are God. Hallelujah. You said what? Messiah. That one is even higher. So, with genuine heart, let's do this. And the money is going. A young guy making a lot of money. Sending, sending, sending. Few years after, then I went home. 
with everything that I was being told, I came to find out that it was completely the opposite. But where is the money? This one has done that. That one has done this one. That one. Has, but what about what we said we were going to do? Oh, that one can wait. And you come up having nothing. Nothing. My grandmother come, she comes around and she said, uh, Oh, Kwaku, don't worry. Those things, you will do them again. I said, Yes. I will do them again, but without you guys. Amen? Amen. Mm. I will do them again, but without you. If it wasn't by God's grace, and the mandate of God upon my life, that would have been my end. And this thing, I'm not the only one that these things have been happening to. Many that went through this did not come out. They did it. It's very hard. When you are outside and someone is chasing you, where do you all run to? Home. Home. And you can imagine the, the little one who is having trouble outside and running home. You see your little child running home and then someone running after that child. You don't stand before the child and ask the ch your child what happened. The first thing you do, you block the way of the one coming after your child. You say, hey, hey stop right here. After you have dealt with that one, then if you have something to say to your child, you say to your child privately. But what about when the attack is from within? Where are you running to? Where are you running to? Wisdom of God to be sensitive to what will make you to become what the Lord had called you to be. We are not saying don't help. God wants you to help. Matter of fact, he said, I am blessing you so that you become a blessing. But he said, you are in this world here. John 17. But you are not from the world. Father, the people that you gave me when I was here, I kept them. But now that my assignment is over, I am coming. They are in the world, but they are not from the world. Keep them away from the evil one. When we hear such a statement, we are seeing the evil one from outside, Satan. We forget the one that is so close to you, right inside. But that is where the problem will be coming from. Satan is very crafty. He knows that you don't know how to deal with family issues. Amazing. Yes. Genuine heart. Deception will come in to the extent that you shall be broken and if God is not picking you up, that will be your end. That will be your end because now, emotionally, family-wise, where are you going to? I remember a story that a man won the U.S. lottery. And he came to America here in Chicago. And the man ran to my store right here on Thorndale. And then uh, he stood. He's from Ghana. He said, oh, I just came to this country and I won the U.S. lottery. And uh, he said, hey, Ghana. Ghana is very hard. I thank God that I won the U.S. lottery to come to this place. I am not going back anymore. That hot place. No more. I said, you said you just came back, right? He said, yes. I said, okay. Wait. Don't talk too fast. At least you have to wait and know where you have come. 
before you start rejecting your home. <laughs> Amen? Eh, wait, it's too early. Home is home. But when home had become a thorn, where is it that you ran to? That is why if one do not have the right perspective of reason of living, seeing God as the ultimate reason of your life, then when these things happen to you, that is your end. It's your end. God alone be the glory. Are you learning something from this message? We thank God. We all know the story of Joseph very well. In Genesis 37 verse 8, they said that when Joseph had a second dream and he told them again, then they hated him even more. He said, this one, the first hatred, he didn't get it. So we are taking our hatred to the next level. And we all know what happened to him. Then in Genesis 37 and verse 10, Joseph told his dream to his father. He said, maybe my brethren are not, they are just jealous and all that. Let me talk to my parents. He told the father and his brethren. And his father rebuked him. The father rebuked Joseph and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed or dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down? ourselves to thee, to thee, to the earth. These are the parents. Let me read that one again because it's very important. Joseph had a second dream. He told the brethren. He went and also told the father. And the father said to Joseph, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I, your father, and thy mother, and thy brethren, indeed, come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth. In other words, Joseph, are you now coming to become someone, somebody in this family to the extent that your glory is going to overshadow all of us? Me, your father, you want to be more successful than I am. Your mother, you also want to be more successful than your mother. You are the youngest. Above your siblings. All that we expect is that where we couldn't get, we want to see our children going there and beyond it. Is it not what we are looking for? Uh, if you are a parent and you are not thinking that way, you are an evil parent. Says Pastor Charles, hallelujah. Every parent must desire higher height for his children. That is why you see us working so hard that where you couldn't get your children, they will go there and beyond it. But listen, listen to this. When the heart is not right, that which is good is even turned unto evil in their sight. That which is what? Good. We all know the story. The father's, the father's complaints right here. We come to find out that down the road, is it not Joseph that is going to save the whole family? Joseph is the one who saved the whole family. But yet, initially, listen to what the father is saying. Man is man, and man will always remain man. It should give you 
a lesson. To be joyful with they that the Lord are blessing. The Lord is blessing the ones that God is blessing. Be joyful with them. Today it is their turn. Tomorrow you just have to know that your turn will also come. That's how it is. But if you are going to have a contented heart, a heart of strife and contention, that you are grieved when you see people doing well, it shall not be well with you. It shall not. Because it is you that is blocking your own blessings. Living with the wisdom of God and be content in every single thing that the Lord gives you. He said he takes us from one degree of glory to another. And the child of God must understand that if today your level is one, tomorrow your level it might not be one. God wants to see you being increased. That is how the principle of Almighty God is all about. So if you learn to be content and given reason to give God glory in every stage of the blessings of God upon your life, you shall see God's glory. But if you are going to take your business out there and this man that I marry, what man is this? Every time, onion and pepper and tomatoes with sardine. Nonsense stories that people are not going to even hear and have compassion on you. and They will just be listening. Oh, if you come across an evil woman who had already divorced also the husband. And they will start, she will start by saying, hey, my dear sister. My dear sister, meaning that she loves you. And every single counsel that she's going to give, it's against the ordinance of the Lord. This is the reason why I left home. This is the reason why. That man, I can see the trend of my husband in yours. These are the rubbish that I could not take. That is why. See my life today. Am I not free? She is not free. She is in captivity. She is not. American calls you single parent. Single parent. Like if you brought forth the children by yourself. And he said, we have, you know, help aids for you. So you are also enjoying being single parent. And very soon you are forming single parent association. And you move around. Hey, I have the custodian of my children. Look at you. You have nothing. Amen. You have what? Nothing. The enemy had broken your home. He had already scattered your children. And your life is already messed up. Be sensitive to every single thing that is in relation with the family. The obvious of siblings is just devastating. When your own people are envied you. Hard. It's very hard. They know you. They know you. That is, that is what makes it hard. They know you. So in Genesis 47, verse 13, it says that a time came to pass that there was no bread in all the land. All the land. For the famine was very sore 
So that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. But in 47, Genesis 47 verse 12, we are reading that this Joseph that they disregarded, this Joseph that was thrown out, this Joseph that was considered to be the nobody, deceived by his own brethren. This Joseph nourished his father that was so much against him about the dream he told him about. He nourished the father, he nourished the brethren, he nourished all his father's household with bread according to their families. Amen? Mm. He went through a lot, but the Lord was with him, and he was able to come out unto God's glory. The most wicked part of this whole situation is when they have finished your life. They finish your life, and they themselves will not become somebody. You understand that? This is the most difficult part of it. The one that had played that much wickedness on you and finished you, it's not like they are coming out unto God's glory or they are coming out successful. Go find out. This is the word of the Lord Little word of exhortation unto you. If you would take the counsel of the Lord and live your life according to the calling of Almighty God upon your life, it shall be well with you. But if you don't, these things, they will happen to you because it is part of our lives. Family is family. May the Lord have mercy upon us. May his strength be upon our lives. May the counsel of the Holy Ghost be our portion that all that God has called us to do shall be fulfilled in this year, 2018, unto his glory. In Jesus' name, let's say amen. Amen. God bless you.